Cleaning up contamination. What do we do? Do we use antibiotic agar? Charcoal? Rit dye? No, we'll go into water agar, because I believe that's all you need. Why, you say? Well, antibiotic agar, by definition, is only good for bacteria. Bacteria is very slow and likes food. Mycelium is fast and runs the hell away from contamination. So when we use water agar, the bacteria likes to stay near the transfer, and the mycelium likes to run away. Now we'll go into a couple different methods here. We'll go into trenching and cabin sequestering, both of which are not always necessary, but if you need to step it up and really clean up that culture, it's a great way to go. <laughs> In most cases, you can just take a small tissue sample, put it on water agar, and it will run away from that bacteria, and that's all you need to clean it up. We'll go over these two methods here, trenching and cabin sequestering, however, and you can kind of get a better idea of what the heck we got going on. So, first thing, of course, we sterilize our scalpel and our punch. We're going to go ahead and we're going to do our prep work here first. We're going to go ahead and cut a simple trench in one, and then we will remove a cavity in the other for placing our little sample into for both cabin sequestering and trenching. So first up, let's go ahead and cut our little trench. All we're really going to do is we're going to kind of cut down at an angle towards the center of the plate, cutting out just a little trench, just like we say. Then we're going to go ahead and we're going to remove that. You just stick your scalpel into it, kind of pull it up. You want to try and get it whole, but you know, as long as you get everything out of there, that's fine. Uh, we'll just set that aside on the plate. There's no need to throw it away. It's sterile. It can stay there and just be ugly on the side. <laughs> The cabin sequester. All we're going to do is we're going to remove a little cavity with either your punch or your scalpel. The idea being that we're going to take a tissue sample and we're going to place it in that cavity. And we want that cavity so that we can later cut out a little cover and cover it easily. And it will create kind of a little seal of agar. And you'll kind of see what I'm talking about here in a second. Take our sterile scalpel here and go ahead and remove that uh, core. Just pull that out. Okay, now we have our cavity there you can see. Nice and neat and pretty. We'll just kind of flick that thing off. <laughs> now we'll take our little core that we sampled on our known bacterial plate. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to put it right in that cavity. If you're just taking a tissue sample, you know, you just cut that little tissue, cram it down in the hole, and then we'll cover it up here later. Sometimes these uh, scalpels develop little burrs on the end, as you can see. It takes a little bit of skill and patience to get off, but uh, just take your time, get it in there, make sure it's well centered, pushed in. Now we'll go ahead and we'll cover that up. You always want to work with your plates covered. Just to, It's just better to do that if you don't have to have them open. You know, don't leave them open. And we sterilize that scalpel again because this will be our cover sheet and we want it to be 100% clean. So we let it cool there. Now we're just going to cut out a little square larger than the size of our cavity there. And you can see it's pretty easy to do. You got a nice sharp scalpel, should be no problem. One thing you got to be careful of is the consistency of your water agar. If you have soft water agar, this won't work. You need to have firm agar in this case, much firmer than jello. And you'll see here the trick to getting that piece out whole is to kind of dive your scalpel in the corner below the little piece that you're pulling out and then push up from the bottom on the piece you want to keep whole. We're going to go ahead and we're going to flip that because we kind of scuffed up the bottom in our process and we know that the top is perfectly flat. And the idea is that we want to push that down on top there and create a kind of seal. And what will happen is the mycelium is strong enough to push past that little seal and the bacteria stays back on our little plug. As you can see right here in the updated picture. 
And back to the trench method. Now you say, Matt, shouldn't you sterilize your scalpel? Well, in most cases, yes. But in this case, I've kept it in my hand. It only touched water agar, and we're touching a known bacterial plate. So I'm not super concerned, but you are correct. You should torch it at any point in between any touching of any other plates for perfect sterility anyhow. In this case, we know we're putting it in a trench, we're cleaning it up, and I know my sterile technique was good, but if you want to say otherwise, I know it's okay. It's all right. We're just getting better as we go here. Here we go. We're going to take a really small little sample here. We want it to set right in that bare plate section in our trench so that it's not really touching the agar on either side. What we want is for it to grow outward. The mycelium will reach out and the bacterial will stay behind on whatever part of the agar got left behind. And what you'll kind of see here is when I lift it up, that it's centered as close as I can get it, and the mycelium will grow outward, and we just cut a little piece off there when it does, and we're good to go. That's trenching. I hope you enjoyed the show. <laughs>